All right, in this video, we're talking about rhombuses, rectangles, and squares, and how they relate to parallelograms. So I want you to look at this Venn diagram and notice that all three of these are in the category of parallelograms. So by definition, all three of them have all the properties of parallelograms that we've been talking about up to now. So the only difference is with rhombuses, um, we know that all four sides are congruent. So that's one extra property that a rhombus has that a parallelogram does not. For a rectangle, we know that all of the angles are right angles. So that's one thing that a rectangle has that a parallelogram does not. And then a square has all the properties of a parallelogram, rhombus, and rectangle. So it has everything a parallelogram has in addition to all four sides being congruent and all four angles congruent. Now I know you guys know this already, but I want you to see that in relation to parallelograms. So we should be able to use those relationships to say always, sometimes, never are these things true. So first, A, a square is a rectangle. That is always true. If you notice in the Venn diagram, a square is always contained in the rectangle oval. Okay, so that will always be true. A rectangle is a square. Well, that's sometimes true. Notice that the parts that are squares, anything that falls in this category, is also in the rectangle. So a rectangle can be a square, but not necessarily, because these are not squares. So that's why it's sometimes. A parallelogram is a rectangle, so that's sometimes. Again, I could have it be a rhombus, a parallelogram be a rhombus, which is not a rectangle. All right, so that would be a time when a parallelogram is not a rectangle, or any of the other uh, parallelograms we've done that don't have 90 degree angles. So a square is a rhombus, yep, that's always true, for the same reason that a square is always a rectangle. A rhombus has four right angles, that only happens sometimes, for instance, when a rhombus is a square. This one, the wording is a little weird, but all rectangles are rhombuses. Um, if they say all rectangles are rhombuses, that's false, right? We can't say all. Some of them are, but not all of them. So for this statement, that is never true. So that's just a one way to have that answer be ne never. You can also add these properties to your hierarchy that you have. So if you wanted to pause and do that, you can add those additional qualities for rectangle, rhombus, and square. Plus, we have more information about diagonals. Um, a parallelogram is a rhombus if and only if its diagonals are perpendicular. So that is true about any rhombus. Those will be right angles right there. So something to keep in mind in future problems then is that each of these triangles are going to be right triangles. And we know lots of things about right triangles. Think about all the trig, um, Pythagorean theorem, right triangle, special right triangles. All, everything from last unit would apply to those right triangles that are created from the diagonals of a rhombus. The other thing we know about the diagonals of a rhombus is that the diagonals bisect a pair of opposite angles. So this is going to create congruent angles here and here. All right, so that's only if it's a rhombus. So for example, AC would bisect DAB and it would also bisect BCD. Then there's the other diagonal, BD. BD bisects ADC, and then also the other one, ABC. So it bisects this angle and this angle. All right, so rhombus, we know two things, perpendicular diagonals and that they are, that the diagonals bisect the angles. Well, keep in mind, too, that we also know from parallelograms, properties of parallelograms, that these would be, the segments would be bisected, so keep that in mind. The other thing we know is that in a rectangle, the diagonals are congruent. 
And if you think about a rectangle, we know that these vertices, the angles, are right. So if I have a diagonal here, then that diagonal is going to be the same as this diagonal here. Okay, we know that this side would be the same, and then that these two sides are the same, so they're the same right triangle. It's just the hypotenuse is, is just like reflected. All right, so it's the same right triangle, so the hypotenuse would be congruent. So that's what those diagonals are, the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Okay, so ABC is a rectangle if and only if AC is congruent to BD, those diagonals. Okay, so let's see if these statements are true or false. The diagonals of a rhombus are always congruent. Well, we didn't say that. We said that about rectangles, so that can't be true always. It might sometimes be true if we're talking about a rhombus that's also a rectangle. The diagonals of a square are never perpendicular. Now, we didn't have anything specific for a square, but remember, a square is anything is both a rectangle and a rhombus. So if a square is also a rhombus, then its diagonals must also be perpendicular. So a square's uh, diagonals are always perpendicular. Okay, so the diagonals of a square are never perpendicular. That would be false, because that's always true. Each diagonal of a rectangle sometimes bisects a pair of opposite angles. That is true. We can sometimes have that happen because if a rectangle is a rhombus, then we know that those angles will be bisected. So then let's use these for a few problems. So here we have a rectangle, and they give us information about RT, that diagonal, and SU, this diagonal. So we just said in a rectangle, those diagonals are congruent. So we would have 6x plus 4 equals 7x minus 4. All right, so uh, move the 6x over here, and we're getting x equals 8, and that's all they wanted, is just to find x. Alrighty, and then now we have another rectangle. But here we have angles, so we have to keep in mind what we know about rectangles and angles. We know these are right angles, but we don't know that those angles are bisected, so we can't set those equal to one another. But we can say that they're complementary, so 5x plus 8 plus 3x plus 2 equals 90. So 8x plus 10 equals 90, 8x equals 80. So x equals 10. All right. Now the other thing is how do we relate this angle right here to either of these down here? Well, I started tracing that out. And if you notice, I can make a z shape. All right, so I know that 6y plus 2 should equal 3x plus 2. And I already know x is 10. So this will be, when I plug in 10, I get 32. So now I can just solve that. Subtract the 2 and then divide by the 6. So I'm getting y equals 5. So just be careful about jumping to conclusions. And then, of course, we have these ones where we have a coordinate grid. So I strongly recommend you graph them out. Negative 2, 1 it helps give you a nice idea of what's going on before just jumping right into it. All right, so I'm going to label these. This is A, B, C, and D. And I'm going to connect them to make a quadrilateral. All right, so we're trying to determine if it's a rectangle using slope. So if it's a rectangle, I would know those are right angles, or in other words, that those would be perpendicular sides. So I need to find the slope of all four sides and see if the um, ones right next to each other are perpendicular. So the slope of AB, if I count that, that would be up 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if I reduce that, that's 1 third. The slope of BC, see that's down 1, 2, 3 over 1. 
so negative 3 over 1. So I've already shown that these are opposite reciprocals. But we need to make sure we do all of them. So CD. So CD I'm going down 2 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 again. So that's negative 2 over negative 6, which is 1 third. And then AD. This is down 1, 2, 3 over 1. All right, so we can show that um, these are opposite reciprocals, and these are opposite reciprocals, and then these are as well, and these are as well. Okay, so if you just show all four slopes, then we can prove that that's a rectangle. All right, so now we have a rhombus, and we have to find the value of y, and we know that this angle is y squared plus 54. Well, we know that the diagonals meet at a 90 degrees, so the angle 1 is equal to 90. So I'm going to say y squared minus 54 equals 90. So if I add the 54 over to the other side, that would give me 144. And then take the square roots, and I would get y equals 12. All right, so yes. And I could actually have it be plus or minus 12, because if I plug that back in, um, that would still have a positive angle measure. And then our last one, we're going to decide whether this parallelogram is a rhombus, rectangle, or square. We're going to list all that apply, and we have to explain why we think that. So negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 3. 3, 2, and 2, negative 2. So we did one where we found the slopes. So that'll help us figure out if those are right angles at the corners. So let's go ahead and do that. This is, let's see, this was A, B, C, and D. All right, so the slopes of A, B, I'm going to go ahead and write all these. And I think it's important to keep, to label your, your slopes so that you keep everything organized. So we're counting, this is at 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. This is over, or down 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4. So down 1 over 4. And then here, this is down 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, which is 4. And then this one is up 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4. Up 1 over negative 4. So, yeah, we can see that these are opposite reciprocals of one another. So, we definitely have a rectangle going on. So now what we need to do is find the distance. So we can either use distance formula. Um, I prefer on these, I like to make the right triangle and do Pythagorean theorem. So if I'm trying to find, like, say, BC, this one has that side is 1, this side is 4. So I can do 1 squared plus 4 squared equals BC squared. So that's going to be 1 plus 16. So that's the square root of 17. So I'm going to put here that BC equals the square root of 17. Notice that I would have the same thing if I was doing AD. That would be a right triangle there. That would be 1 and 4. So AD would also be the square root of 17. So now let's do the other ones, AB. AB is, if I make a right triangle out of that, this is a side of 1, and this is 1, 2, 3, 4 again. So I'm going to be doing 1 squared plus 4 squared. All right, so AB is also square root of 17, and um, CD will also be that. All right, so... 
we can add then, since all the sides are the same, we can add that it's a rhombus. And since it's both a rhombus and a rectangle, we can also put that it's a square as well. Now, if I asked you for the most specific answer, then you would just put square. All right. But since it just said to list all that apply, then that's what we would do. Okay, so the sides tell us that the, the distance formula tells us that um, the sides are congruent and the slopes tell us that we have right angles.